Hey, what's up guys? It's Nick White. I do tech and coding stuff on Twitch and YouTube. Check the description for everything you need to know. And playlists for hack rank and linked solutions are on my channel. This is called Java Subarray, doing all of the Java problems. Um, we define the following. A subarray is an n element array composed of from a contiguous block of the original array's elements. For example, if an array is 1, 2, 3, subarrays are 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. Something like 1, 3 would not be a subarray because it's not contiguous. You know, you can't skip elements. You can't go 1 and 3. You have to, you know, it, contiguous, right? Makes sense. Uh, continuous, you know, consecutive, contigu contiguous, you know? The sum of a, an array is the total sum of its elements, right? So, you know, the sum of 1 is 1. Sum of 1 and 2 is 3. So that would be the sum of this, 2 and 3, 5, etc. Um, an array sum is negative if the total sum is negative. Array sum is positive if the total sum is positive. First line contains an integer n denoting the length of the array a in the set. Oh, it says given an array of uh, of n integers, find and print the number of negative subarrays on a new line. Uh, so we get n, the size of the array, and then we get a bunch of elements in our input where those are the elements of the array. So first we have to form our array because they actually make us read it in. So uh, let's do scanner scanner equals new scanner of system.in. That means we're taking input with this thing. Uh, let's get the size and n. So scanner.next int. We have the size of the array. Now we can initialize it. Uh, array equals new int n. So we have the size of our array and it's initialized. Let's loop through and get the rest of the values. Um, and let's just, what are we doing now? Oh yeah, we're getting the values. Array of i equals scanner.nextint. So now the array should be filled up after this, right? So we can close our scanner. We're not taking any more input. Now we're actually going to calculate the number of negative subarrays. The number of negative subarrays. Yeah, yeah. So how do we do this? Well, the only way that I can think of to do this is to calculate all subarrays and check which ones have a sum of negative values. So basically, to calculate all the subarrays, we're going to do a loop from i to from 0 to n. Then we're going to do an inner loop. This is going to be a cubed uh, n cubed time complexity algorithm, which is not good. But um, let me know if you can think of anything faster. I really can't. Uh, I didn't look it up or anything, so maybe that's why I didn't you know put all the effort in here. But I think this is like. I can't, I would usually be able to think of a solution that like might be possible. I can't think of anything. So we have an inner loop that goes from I to N, right? So when, so let, let me just explain this inner loop for anyone who kind of is a beginner here still. The outer loop, right? Everyone should know that we're just looping through an array element by element. So from zero to one, we're, I is going to go like this. I is this, then this, then this, then this, then this, and then the loop's done. So when i is this, we're actually going to do have j go from here to here to here to here to here, right? And since the it's contiguous, subarrays are contiguous. When i goes to here, then we j just goes from i to n, right? It makes perfect sense, right? Because we're not going backwards at any point. We're not doing anything crazy. We're not jumping elements. So these loops make sense, right? Now for the last loop, we're going to go from we're going to set k equal to i. And then k is going to do, be less than or equal to j, because j never goes out of bounds or anything, so we could do that. And then k plus plus. So this is the inner loop. Now, we're going to have our current sum declared up here. So current sum is going to be equal to 0 before we begin our k loop. And then current sum will just add all of the array values of k, right? And then let me explain what this is going to do, and then we'll check if current sum is less than zero, then we'll do uh, number uh, negatives plus plus, uh, and then we'll that's that's going to be the number of negative subarrays. So we'll just or we'll call it negative subarrays, negative sub r's, right? Negative subarrays, whatever. I can't make up my mind. Uh, so there we go. So negative subarrays will increment every time we find a you know negative su a negative total value. So 
what this is doing is, right, I just explained I goes through the whole thing, and when I is here, J goes through the whole thing. So let's say J is at, you know, we have one, I is at one, and then we have J at negative two. When that's at that point, K will go to one and add one and negative two. It'll loop from I to J, add those values, and that is how we calculate all possible subarrays. Three loops. It takes three loops to calculate all possible subarrays. Let me know if you can figure out a better way to do this. I'd, I'd love to hear it, but maybe with some space. No, I can't think of anything. But yeah, K is going to generate all possible subarrays as we loop through with I and J. And we're going to, while we do that, while we loop through with K, we'll make the current sum for that particular subarray we're working on. If it's negative, we just add one because we found another negative subarray. And then there you go. That's it. Uh, we calculated all the subarrays. We found which ones were negative. And all that's left to do now is roll out the red carpet for you. No, I'm just kidding. I've been watching uh, too much hot ones. This camera, this camera, this camera. Let the people know what you got going on. Um, but yeah, that's that should be it. Uh-oh, failed test case? No. Yep. Um, that might, yeah. All right, well, I could have figured that this would happen because we didn't, um, you know, I just knew. There we go. I just knew that I couldn't make it through a whole video without uh, getting something wrong. All right, there we go. So that was it. To solve this, you generate all subarrays of an array as you loop through, and you just check the current sum as you go through. If it's negative, you add one to a counter, and we print it. Thanks for watching. Check out the next video. Also, please drop a comment if you do know how to do this faster, because I'm going to research it later. Maybe I'll put it in the comment or something, but... Uh, I hate n cubed runtimes. Like that's something you never want to do. But I just think that's how you got to do it to generate all subarrays. So let me know what you guys think, and see you next time.